My name's Matt Berry. I was fortunate enough to interview Brian Eno at the peak of his creativity back in October 1976 at a recording studio situated in the French countryside. He invited me to listen to some half-finished sketches he was currently working on. It's always fascinating to experience work in progress from any artist, even an unskilled one such as Eno. It's even more fascinating to then eventually hear these sketches developed and in context as part of a finished work. Quite defensive from the outset, Eno did eventually thaw to give me quite an insight into the man, and more importantly, the artist. Now, you're known as Brian Eno, yep. yet your full name apparently is Brian Peter George de la John Sieur Le Baptiste Roger Farfisa Schweppes Lear Bernard Fancourt Richard Peter Loonhouse de la Salle Eno. Mm -hmm. Well, you must have been a bloody laughing stock. I was, actually, most of the time until... Even until I was about 28, I was known just as Eno. Nobody used my first name, Brian. I'd be quite happy if they didn't know, actually. But... Brian, yeah. if I were unkind, I might call you a jack of all trades and master of none. Or if you like a dilettante. Well, I am a dilettante, and it's only in England, I think, that dilettantism is considered a rather bad thing to do. Also says in my notes that you're a fifth-generation postman. Yeah, my father was a postman, my grandfather was a postman, my great-grandfather was a vet and part-time postman, my uncle was a postman... You don't fancy it? No, I don't. I mean, I would love to be able to say that I could be a wonderfully content postman, but actually the world I enjoy being in is so much the world of culture that I think I would find the idea of... Being um, a postman total hell? Yes, I think so, yes. And before you even got to art college, you started experimenting, firstly with your mother's dresses. I used to wear a lot of women's clothes, yes. For instance, velvet bodices and... <laughs> things like that. <coughs> What's the first piece you're going to play? The first thing I'm playing is something that was one of a group of songs that were very big influences on me as a kid. So it's a cover? In fact, they sounded to me like music from outer space when I first picked them up on my little transistor radio late at night. And what's this one called? Girl, I Want to Feel Your Body. Lovely. Take it away, maestro. Extraordinary. So how the hell did you achieve that? Striking a, a big metal lampshade with a pen <laughs> and then slowing the tape down considerably and, and running it at several different speeds. All on a tape recorder? Mm hmm So why a tape recorder? The first music I ever made, really, was made with a tape recorder. So it was my first instrument and I guess it's still my primary instrument. OK, let's rewind to mid to late 60s... Brian Eno. Now, you were at art college, I would presume. Yeah. Were you a hippie? I was a bit mixed up because I was a mod at one time, but right. I didn't have a motor scooter. <laughs> <laughs> so I was a sort of a rather conceptual mod, I would say. Yeah. Then I, I went to art college, yes, and I was a sort of a beatnik as well for a while. There was a big crossover at that time between young beatniks and young mods. Mods. A, a modnik. Yeah. So you were experimenting at college with uh, women's clothes and whatnot mm -hmm. and then I'm guessing that led to you getting involved with music yes I think so yes and what was that music like I'm sure it was terrible why the instruments we had were very crude and um, when you say crude 
Do you yeah. mean crude sounding, as in lavatorial? No, I don't. I mean, you could be a good musician or you didn't have to be. You didn't have to be. The point of the thing was to try your hardest to play the piece well. Well, that doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Why not just learn your instrument and be good? Yeah. It was at this point that Ina grabbed my microphone with one hand and my neck with the other and, with very adult language, ordered me to stop the interview. After what seemed like hours, he eventually let me go and agreed only to continue with the interview if my producer went out into the nearest town and fetched a packet of woodbines, two cans of stout and the equivalent of 40 quid from a French hole in the wall. Within an hour, common sense prevailed and we continued with the interview. So let's skip on a couple of years. You meet Brian Ferry... He asks you to join Roxy Music. Mm-hmm. And how would you describe your role within that band? <laughs> Through all the songs. What? what, you mean you actually used to go, ah, ah, ah? No, I don't. I mean... <laughs> but you, um, you up the makeup again. Yeah. I mean, to a different, different level. And the garb. Mm-hmm. Um, were you the first to do that? Yes, I think so, yes. Now, you're going to play another piece of your music for us now. Yeah. Um, do you want to tell us anything about it before you crack on? It's a kind of music that I have a great affection for, West African pop, but it's also the best keep fit music. This is the best dance music I've ever heard. Well, that's a hell of an endorsement. I can't wait to hear it. Take it away. Truly extraordinary. And the <coughs> the listeners won't realise, but that was you actually singing. Mm-hmm. Sounds great. Now, I've read somewhere that you don't like the sound of your own voice. Oh, I didn't say I didn't like it. I said I think it's a bit thin. Do you like singing like that? I love singing, yes. I, In fact, I do it to the distraction of everybody else around me, I think. Now, Brian, I'm going to ask you to empty the contents of your pockets yep. and describe them individually as... You lay them down on your table. They're it's not best not to think about it. Just do it and say what they are. Tenor sax. <laughs> Porcelain. Mechanical organs. Clocks and watches. The tape recorder. Big metal lampshade. Sine waves. Sex. <laughs> Sorry, did you just say sex? Yeah. Mm, naughty, naughty. Is it true that you own the largest collection of self-portraits in the UK? Yes, I think so, yes. So you have, in your house, more portraits, paintings of yourself, than anyone else in the UK, including the Queen? Mm-hmm. And at least a couple of them are painted by serial killers? Yeah. It doesn't square well with my picture of myself as an experimental artist. <laughs> um, that's not the only picture I have of myself, but it's certainly one of them. And well, what are the others? Next to that, there's a picture of me as a sentimental person who's moved by quite soppy things. Like, the like what? Jazz. Jazz? Wouldn't it be a bit unnerving walking around your house with pictures of yourself staring back at you. When you have a painting on the wall, you don't sit and stare at it all the time. You look at it sometimes and then you get on with what you're doing. Then you might look at it again. Yeah, but you wouldn't be able to help it. 
It'd be like someone calling your name every time you walked into a room or someone tapping you on the shoulder, don't you think? No, I don't. I think if you stay with the analogy of a thing that exists and can absorb full attention but doesn't require full attention the whole time, um, this, is, this is rather what I hoped would happen with music. Brian, before you perform your third and final piece... I'm going to ask you a series of quick-fire questions. Um, now, I didn't tell you about this before because you might have refused. I'm going to launch straight into the first one now. As a vegetarian, do you ever eat meat? Mm-hmm. Do you ever stop for hitchhikers? No, I don't. Did I... you ever meet Elvis Presley? Yeah. Did you discuss working with Elvis Presley? Mm-hmm. Do you support efforts to protect the blue whale? I'm not as interested in them as everyone else is. Do you watch A Question of Sport? Yeah. Have you ever witnessed anybody spontaneously combust into flames? Mm-hmm. Do you believe in piracy? Um, I think if you... Do you have over two million pounds in your bank account? Yeah. Have you yourself killed a pet to save taking it to the vet? Mm -hmm. Do you think convicted thieves should be branded on their foreheads? Yes, I think so, yes. Do you regularly give money to charity? No, I don't. I'm quite <laughs> soft. I think that's it. I think we're done, Brian. Yeah. OK, to end with, you're going to play us your final tune, which is a bit of an exclusive, is it not? Yes, I think so, yes. And this is something that you've been working up with David Bowie, who's also going to join us. He's been sat very patiently <laughs> during all of this. Hello there. So I'm going to let you two just get into position and get on with it, I suppose. Does it have a title? None of your business. None of my business. <laughs> OK. I preferred the African one, but that was truly superb. Well, thank you very much indeed, Brian Eno. Thank you. Matt Berry Interviews was written, performed and edited by Matt Berry. The producer was Matt Strong and it was a BBC Studios production.